Hello and welcome. This is the first tutorial in a series of many that is going to be geared towards people who want to edit Second Life pictures in Photoshop. Uh, almost exclusively we'll be working in Photoshop either in CS6 or in CC, which is Creative Cloud for those who don't know. And as we progress, the tutorials will be getting more and more advanced, but I figured we'd start with something really basic. So the first thing I want to talk about is blend modes. Now, blend modes is how you set a layer and how it interacts with the layers below it, or if you have a layer clipped, which is something we will talk about very briefly in this video. Um, so to show this, and where this is all located, is on your layer, in your layers panel, and if you don't have your layer panels up, you can always go to window and show layers. There's quite a few different, different blend modes here, and really you're only going to be working with a few of them depending on what you're doing. Um, personally, I use about six or seven. Um, it really depends on what we're working on. So, now as you can see, there's some horizontal rules here. And each one of these actually represents a different type of blending. So the top, we just have our normal blend modes. And in this section right here, we have our darkened modes. Right here, we have our light modes. And right here, we have our contrasts. We also have this area, which is for inversions. And then down here we have component. Now, a lot of these might not be what you're looking to use for, but you know it really could depend on how you edit. Remember, there's no right way and there's no wrong way, as long as you get the effect you're looking for. So, before we, before I even start this tutorial, I just jumped into Second Life here, and this is my avatar, and just went to a random landscape sim and grabbed a picture just for purposes of testing here. Now we're not really going to be doing any editing in this picture, it's more about explanations more than anything right now. So if you don't see, if you see something on here that you don't understand, don't worry, I will probably cover it. Also, I do have screen annotations on, so when I push a key, you'll see down here what I'm actually pushing on the keyboard. Um, so let's get started. So most of these layer blend modes affect how the color is on top of it. Now I've set up a very basic white to black test here. So we have white, various shades of gray, and black. Now the reason this is important is because Photoshop mostly deals with how it interprets the levels of color and its luminosity, which is how bright or dark something is. So, we have white, which is all the way bright, obviously black that's all the way down, and then we have the grays in between. Now, depending on the blend mode you're in, this is going to produce different stuff. So, let's just work through these and I can show you also visually how it's done. Now, if you haven't played with this on your own, I recommend you really open up your own picture and just kind of play around with these things. So, normal is what we normally see. You make a new layer, that's typically where you're going to get. Dissolve? Well, you're not going to see anything right now, and we'll get into that a different a later time. So, darken. Now you're actually starting to see stuff happen here. Now, if you look at the white area, nothing's changed. And as you go darker to black, everything kind of gets a little darker. And then black, it absolutely is just black. Now, I want to point out a couple things here that if you look, the light areas are almost like graying out, and that's because of the gray value. All right, next one, multiply. Multiply is kind of like darken, however, it does not change the color tones. This is great when you need to make certain kinds of like shadows, for example, or you need to darken an area, but not change the color tone. You're just changing how bright and how dark it is. Color burn. A color burn is literally what it sounds like. You are literally burning the colors that are there. 
So when you're in white, it's completely invisible. And then as we get closer and closer to black, it burns it more and more. Linear burn, it's the same idea, but it tries to protect those color tonalities, but it's still burning the color pixels. And mostly, it's actually just changing the luminosity and burning the colors. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about here by burning, burning means to um, darken those colors and those luminosities. Um, this is actually a throwback to the film days where we would have to take photos in the negatives in a dark room and we would actually uh, darken different areas and lighten different areas using transparencies or literally burn on the, the film negative or expose onto paper more of this particular light and it would produce a darker color. That's where burning comes from. So, and then darker color, it's a lot similar to the other mode, the first mode we talked about here, but you know, it all has a different play. To be honest, the only mode I really use in this area is multiply. And that's because it actually just darkens stuff without changing the tonality. Okay, and then the next section is all about lightning colors, which is literally the opposite. And it also has an opposite effect. Whites are more visible and blacks become invisible. So as you get more whites in your colors, more of an effect. And lighten is literally the opposite of darken. Screen is the same as multiply, but it's using lighten. So as you can see here, it's lightening the colors, but it's not changing the color tonality. It's literally just brightening them up. Color dodge is again, obviously, the opposite of color burning. When you're dodge, same idea. When you're color, same idea. You're starting to see a theme here. Okay. Now where things get interesting. These are the contrasts where white and black and gray all have different effects. So if we go to overlay, this is actually a combination of having both darken and lighten modes together. So it is going to lighten and it is going to darken and it will change the tonality of your pixels. <clears throat> Excuse me. Soft light, which is what a lot of people use, is the same as combining multiply and screen. And this is great because you can create your, your darks and your lights and everything in between without changing the color tonality. You're literally just doing both. Hard light, again, another combination. Vid light, another combination. Linear light, another combination of these previous modes. Now, pen light, it's a little different. Pen light is an interesting mode. I honestly have never found a real good use for it. And maybe somebody out there has. I mean, if you do, go ahead and comment below how you use it. And I would be <laughs> very interested to see how it's done. Same deal with hard mix. Um, and usually it's because it's, this gives a really bad effect. Um, now, down here, we have the inversions. So, difference is literally inverting the colors and the luminosity of the pixels. Black is invisible, and white is completely visible. Exclusion. Now, this is where it's interesting. So, it's the same mode before, except that when you get closer and closer to 50% gray, those become completely visible where black is totally visible and white is invis sorry black is invisible and white is visible it's a very interesting mode um, I really haven't found a use for it subtract you're literally subtracting light and color depending on if it's more white or not divide same deal but it's flipped we're adding light where white is new, the neutral color and black is the positive color. Hue, you're determining how much color is in it. And this actually, you can't visualize with black and white. You actually have to use color in this. Um, saturation is the same deal. Color, the same deal. And luminosity will actually just 
separate out the luminosity in your scene. Um, these all have really awesome uses later on, which we'll talk about probably in another video. In reality, I personally only use a few of these different play modes. I use, like I said, the multiply because it darkens, the screen because it lightens, and the soft light, which is a combination of the previous mentioned two, aside from normal. I mean, that's really basically what blend modes are. They really just blend the layer layers below it with that layer. Um, now, with layers, we're talking about layers here, we actually got three different layers here. I'm going to explain these out. So this first layer, which sometimes you'll see, is what we call background. And this has a little lock symbol. It means it's locked in some way. Um, and then we have a normal layer. And then we have a group. And a group has multiple layers and stuff inside of it. Just clean this up here. So, when you make a new layer, everything in this stack, in your layers window here, is going to be showing visible from the top to the bottom. So, if I take my brush, let's go, uh, let's get a nice color here. There's like no color in this. And if I paint, right in the center here. You can see it. But if I move this underneath the white and black, it you can't see it anymore because this white to black layer is over that layer. Move this back up here. I'm going to make another layer here. I'm going to grab a nice contrasting color. And we're just going to paint over the side over here. So, as you can see, what's happening here is, depending on the layer order, it'll be shown on top or underneath. Pretty cool. Pretty easy stuff, too, though. So, um, another thing I want to show is clipping masks are a, a really, really handy thing. So, when you make a layer, you can create it as a clipping mask. And what this does is it prevents the pixels from showing on the layer that it's clipped to. If you look over here, you can see there's a little arrow pointing down. This means this is clipped to that layer below it. And if there's multiple of these, it always refers down to the layer that's clipped to. So when I paint in this area, if I try painting out here, nothing really happens. But if I paint in this area, you can see I'm only painting on the pixels that are visible. This can have some really, really fun effects, especially if you are the kind of photographer or editor that likes to do green screens or white cutouts, where you're compositing multiple pictures into a, you know one scene. You know, it can be really handy depending on how you edit. Mind you, this, there's no right way, there's no wrong way. Let's go ahead and delete these. So folders are really handy, and in Photoshop they're actually called groups. So to make a group, you can just click Create New Group, and we'll get a group. And then we can drag things into different groups and wherever we want. Oops, I actually had that outside. So, I mean, that's, that's the basics of layers. I mean, and layers are so powerful. So whenever you're editing, try to use as many layers as you can. It really helps. So, one thing I want to show is masks. Now, we talked about clipping masks, where it clips to another layer below it, but regular masks are a little different. So, let's say I started painting something. Alright, got a nice little uh, odd shape here. Now, if I wanted to hide part of this, I could just come over here and get my eraser tool. And I can start erasing. Which does make the pixels invisible, because we're actually deleting the pixels. However, if we ever wanted to go back and change this, 
we can't, because we've already destroyed those pixels. You back up one step here. And that's where masks come in. So I just clicked this button right here, which adds a layer mask to our current selected layer. And I want to point out, if you click it again, you actually create a vector mask, which is something we'll, we'll talk about in a later video. So, and, and also, when you click your different layers and stuff, make sure that if you have a layer mask, you're selecting either the layer mask or the layer itself that you're going to be painting on. In this case, we're going to be painting on the layer mask. Now, the layer masks are just black and white images. You can't, they don't include color or anything. And depending on whether you paint with white or black or any variation of gray in between, it'll change the opacity of those pixels. Whether, and that means to make them visible or invisible. So, if you paint with white... Oops, I'm still on the eraser tool. Let's use the brush tool here. So if I paint with white, nothing's going to happen. I'm actually clicking and dragging here. However, if I start painting with black, those pixels become invisible. However, if we disable the layer mask, you can see the pixels are there, so we can always come back and change this. It's a nice little uh, technique that we call non-destructive workflow, meaning that everything you do, can you, you can always go back and you can always change. So, that's what black does. It makes things invisible. And white will make things visible again. And you guessed, if we did 50% pure gray, we painted, it would make it half visible. Pretty neat stuff. And, if you're curious, we made a clipping mask could indeed come back and paint only in that clipped area. You can get some pretty neat effects with this, but it's more about control. So one last thing I want to talk about in this video is going to be the opacity and the fill. So when you have something, let's say we take our uh, text tool here. Let's make some nice text. It's the generic Hello YouTube. We're gonna we're gonna make that 400 size. Move that over. So with opacity, you're actually controlling the opacity of that layer. Now, if you don't have any layer styles, and this is something we'll talk about in another video. You can also use the fill to control how visible it is. And if you want fine adjustments, you can use them both in combination. Opacity and fill to get a really small control. So the reason, so the, the real difference is, is how this affects the layer with layer styles. So if I pick just a random style here, let's say I wanted to pick this nice little outer glow. And don't worry so much about this for now. It's more about explaining than really editing today. So, if I change the opacity and bring it down, it's going to make everything in that layer invisible or visible. However, if I change the fill, it's only going to affect what's being shown, but not the layer styles. So in this case, it'll make the text disappear. But we still have that layer styling. And of course, you can use the combination of these to do different stuff. So, I hope you liked this video. Uh, we got a ton of things to cover still. If there's any specific um, technique or editing mode that you want to see, just pop it in the comments, I'll see it, and uh, we'll see about getting that video done maybe sooner than later. Also, if you, wanna, if you have a picture that you want edited or featured on this show, let me know. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, you know the drill.